All right, guys. Just for old old time sakes, let us clap on three. Sorry, I wasn't watching, so I didn't see you guys had your hands already. I was looking at something else. On three. One, two. Welcome back, everyone, to the show of Requirements, a Harry Potter podcast streaming everywhere you can get podcasts and also now Including on YouTube. YouTube. Woo! We're excited. The whole team is back. I'm your host, David Gonzalez, and I'm joined by my co host Spencer Price and Abby Tooley. Guys, we're back. Season four, episode one. Woo! It's here. The, the dynamic has radically changed around. very quickly. <laughs> Because we're on YouTube now, so yeah. <laughs> we're doing it live. So if you wanted the uncut version, it's not that different, but now now you have it. <laughs> yeah. Now you it, can get the big sounds of Spencer drinking his water bottle. <laughs> mm. Yeah, but it's Let's been it some time, guys. Variety. It has it, it has been some time. And so obviously uh, things have happened since we last recorded an episode. So um we're just gonna do some catch up real quick right now so i'll go ahead and go first so for me the big thing that has happened is i have now officially launched my youtube channel uh the sw historian uh and at the time of recording i just dropped my first video which is the star wars historian show doing our season five finale talking through Andor. so if you're a star wars fan if you love star wars make sure to subscribe and follow the channel uh, as I'll be doing stuff like the Star Wars Historian show with Luke. Um, but then I'll, I'm also going to be doing, uh, this is kind of in the works, but I feel more than confident to go ahead and announce this. But Cole Harris and I are going to do the Bad Batch season two reviews. Uh, and so we've been talking through that today and we think it's going to happen. And so we're going to review the entire the entirety of season two on uh my youtube channel so that's huge and exciting for me but who who wants to share what's what's been going on in your lives uh as it's been a while since the fans have heard from us absters well, <laughs> <laughs> um i don't know on i don't remember when all of our fans like all the updates we had on our fans last heard from us, but so the, the it was we December the 20th. finale, but yeah, but the we actually recorded it like two weeks, pretty much two like weeks the first ahead. week of December was the last time. Yeah, it was a while ago. Yeah. So yeah, so since then we've told everybody that I am expecting a child. So that's yeah. Fun. I was gonna, I was gonna reveal yeah. it for you. I was gonna like, well, Abby's been having babies, so yeah. <laughs> I haven't had Just it one. yet. Still cooking. hasn't had it. <laughs> <laughs> Still cooking. Um, yeah, that won't happen until this summer. So that'll add a huge up. news, huge news. Yeah. And now, so get excited, video subscribe for the live episode. It. Yeah, the live episode, July, whatever due date. <laughs> Wait, hold From on. So are you room. saying? What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, so as she's giving birth, all right, special show requirement episode right here, right now. Character studies, Abby's baby. <laughs> Straight yeah. up. Is it yeah. a boy or is it a girl? We don't know. Is yet. It That's not the question we need no answered. It's, is it a Hufflepuff or is it not a Hufflepuff? That's fair. Oh, That's fair. Abby, are you going to do the whole thing? To uh, Obviously, I saw the picture of like the, the onesie that you yeah. had, which was like, I'm a father, like my. I'm a Jedi like my father before me. And then unless I get like my Hogwarts letter or something, I think mm -hmm, I'm like just remembering off the top, top of my head. But yeah, yeah I, I, what I was thinking is that you should do the thing with the onesies to where you have every single Hogwarts house and your baby has to crawl and pick one. Yeah. And that's the house that he gets into. I did just watch some friends actually just did that for their child. Yeah. And so no. I think that that'd be so fun. Yeah. 
I, it would. That's like infant baptism. Don't listen to Spencer. It'd it be so count. much fun. <laughs> I mean, also, I thought David was going to say, I'm a father like, like my father before me. Okay, yeah, that was funny. Uh, I thought that too. And like that made me father. think of uh, a certain friend of ours who I think I'll just leave him, I'll, I'll leave him nameless, but his one of the best jokes he ever said, which was, I'm celibate like my father before me. <laughs> <laughs> Love that man. Hope he's doing well. <laughs> I hope David's not frozen. Right oh, he now. is. He's absolutely frozen. Listeners. Oh, there, oh, there we back. go. There we go. Yeah. I don't know. Abby, what so else have is, you been doing though? Yeah. But, uh, you know. This is just an Abby episode. <laughs> for like two weeks at the end of December, I was off of work, which was nice. So just spending time with family and friends um didn't do much harry pottering oh i did get hold on hanging we can do this now because there's a video component to the show there's a video component guys i got the fun like like, edition that's got like the pop-outs and everything and like the really cool like awesome wait where's the illustration i need a good illustrated page hold on I don't know. They've got like the fun illustrations to it too. Sweet. Like all around the that edges and everything. Yeah. And then you get like oh, you know. Gosh, Draco looks so crazy right there. <laughs> so pale. He's so um, pale. So I'm slowly Let's working my way through that. So I, I lie. I did actually. I've been Harry Pottering just a little bit. So. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. I and I love that. them because they're like this nice, beautiful hardcover edition. So yeah, absolutely. Add me, add me next super, time. Super cool. Add me, add me next time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so, they're all the paperback editions. Paperback, hardback, illustrated. It's a mishmash. I did not. I did not get um, an illustrated edition from Izzy this year, but that's okay. I'm kind of. I'm just trying to cap- capture them all by the time I can read them to my future child one day. And so yeah. I have time. <laughs> I have the first two. The only Harry Potter gift I got, which is my sister got me a Marauder's Map toy for my dog, which he promptly destroyed. But it was very <laughs> cute. Nice. That's <laughs> nice. Yeah, I didn't get and anything. He kept saying Harry Marauders, um, which <laughs> was rough on the brain. Mm. It's kind of like when Spencer says, hey, Grid. What? Hey, <laughs> who? <laughs> who? 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 So, uh, what else have I been up to? I've been rewatching the MCU Phase Four mm. in release in the original intended release order. Um, you can. I'm going to talk more about that on our uh, the, one of the other network podcasts, Fandom Done Right, which I host with like, Cole and Tim. So we don't have to talk about that here, but it's been fun. I'm kind of stuck in Wandavision right now. So mm-hmm. I'm probably going to just take a break and catch up on some other things like Willow and other fun things. Yeah. Uh, I got Horizon Zero Dawn. So I've been playing that. Nice. It's kind of fun, kind of weird. And then today I got a Christmas gift. I bought myself with some gift cards and stuff. Uh, God of War Ragnarok. So I just started mm-hmm. playing that. Mm. Have you watched the wow. have you watched any of the clips of that yet? Abby, I watched an entire playthrough with Cody because since we don't have okay. like a PlayStation yeah. all, for those, yeah, we watch fantastic. like. That's cool. Did you? Yeah, did like Cody notice hours. who's playing Odin in Ragnarok? So did he notice? I don't remember if he did. I think I went. I think we both went. It's, oh, uh, he looks familiar. It's Toby Ziegler from The West Wing. Yes, we did <laughs> talk about it because I think we both had to look him up. We were like, oh. That's we so know familiar. him. Where do we know him from? Yes. So <laughs> anyway, they're I'm not asked. It's yeah, it always so. does. Um, I'm not very far into it at all. But other than that, oh, we Tim and this hasn't probably come out yet at the release of this episode. I don't think so. But Tim and I are doing a rewatch of Mission Impossible this spring. Mm. So we watched nice. the first That's two, stuff. which are the most skippable. So we did both right. of them in one episode and then we're going to be doing the rest of those this spring. So a lot of stuff. Man, and I haven't I've been trying to finish all straight through in a while. So hot take that the know, first one's skippable. I feel like that sets up the story, right? 
No, the second one is skippable. The first one's good. Um, oh. Yeah. Yeah, the Chamber of Secrets is skippable. <laughs> no, I didn't compare it to Chamber of Secrets. The comparison <laughs> is uh, Mission Impossible 2 is the Too Fast, Too Furious of the Mission Impossible series. <laughs> but anyway, the on the fantasy side of things, I've been really trying to cook my way through Eldest, but it is so long. It is unbelievably yeah. long. It never yeah. ends. I am 22 hours into it, I think. And I'm still <laughs> just listening away. Mm -hmm. It's killing me. But I want to know what happens. So still going. Yeah. That's why I really only committed to reading that franchise once. Because it's all right to do it. Again. <laughs> <laughs> it's so long. And Eldest and Aragon's the most annoying part of the book. <laughs> At least Eldest specifically. So that's mm. what I've been doing. <laughs> yeah. Fair. Yeah. And lastly, been... a ton of Brooklyn Nine Nine. Just oh yeah, Brooklyn of course. Nine -Nine. Never a bad time to. Well, I've never seen it or binge watch. And it. Seen oh, it all the way through. Seen oh, it? you've never I've seen, seen bits. it. I've seen bits and pieces, but I hadn't watched it all the way through. So it honestly, it's probably my favorite. It's my one of my favorite shows, if not my favorite. Just because yes, I can rewatch it. I don't care how many times, and it never gets old. Yeah. In terms of, of my reading or watching, so I've been watching, obviously, like Andor was, and then I'm watching Bad Batch. And then I also, I watched Willow. Uh, I gave it a chance and I've been watching Willow and I'm really excited for the finale, um, which by the time this episode comes out, the finale probably would have already happened by now, maybe. Um, but, uh, and then I'm also, I'm going through my star wars journey of reading the canon books and so from january of 2021 till december of 2022 i've read over 40 books 36 canon four legends and then already in january i've read rogue one um i'm trying to uh the battle of jedda and currently i'm reading uh battlefront 2 inferno squad so I, that's like my deep, deep Star Wars thing. But we're here to talk about Hagrid. That's the episode for today. Uh, Hagrid. Hagrid. His name is Hagrid. Um, Rest in peace, Robbie Coltrane. Yes, yes. And we're going to talk about him here in, in a second, in a little bit. Um, but yeah, we're, character we're doing studies. character study. And been we're talking second. about Rubius Hagrid. And so I'm going to kind of give a little bit of context and just a quick summary of, of his character. And then we're going to just deep dive into some questions about why this character is just so important and, and essential to the wizarding world of Harry Potter. And so Rubius Hagrid was born on December 6th, 1928 in the Forest of Dean in Great Britain to Mr. Hagrid and uh, I, I hope I don't butcher this name, but I probably would. Fred Wolfa? I think that's yeah. right. I think uh, that's accurate. Who is a giantess. Uh, and so that basically makes Hagrid like, like a half giant. Um, and then here's the thing. It always happens every episode, and this is it. Uh, there is a section this is on fandom that has, he is also known as, that is completely useless and irrelevant. It doesn't need to be a thing, but Mud it is a thing. Uh, <laughs> and, no. and but there was only That's two the things on one. there. Yeah, there, there's only there's only two things on there. One of them is Hagger, obviously by Grop. Hagger. Uh, he calls him Hagger, and then uh, and then it said this, which I don't I don't know. We might want to dispute this. Maybe we don't. But like, also he's he's called Hagrid by the big three, Hermione, Harry, and Ron, and then the professors at Hogwarts. But those are like the only two. Like, Are, we gonna dis are you saying we should dispute that there's more? No, not that there's more, but I feel like everyone just calls him Hagrid. I don't so, know if anyone... Yeah. Yes. Um, Dumbledore maybe calls him Rubius once or at, in a blue moon. <laughs> yeah. And... I'm pretty sure Draco calls him like a half something just as an insult. Yeah. yeah. But that's really I, it. And then students yeah. call him professor when he's teaching. But really. Yeah. 
really that's probably really, it. yeah he's also a really gamekeeper it. so mm-hmm. i would yeah. say that's yeah. a title that he's been called at one point or another yeah absolutely but mostly so, that's it so he was a gryffindor student at hogwarts until his third year when he was framed by tom riddle for opening the chamber of secrets and was then expelled as a student uh, as because like a student had been killed by the monster in the chamber um, that was misidentified as Aragog. Uh, um, and so after this, <laughs> Professor Dumbledore was able to get Hagrid, you know, the job as a, the school's gamekeeper. And and that was until 1993 when he was finally appointed to care to, to the position of care of magical of magical creatures. Um, now his legacy, which is one of my I, I love talking about legacy for, for, for any character is that he was one of the first characters that we are introduced to in the entire Harry Potter universe. Uh, he serves as one of the first father figures for Harry and is his guide as he takes his first steps in the wizarding world. And so he's just so crucial, so important and really to, in my opinion, he's like the best person to kind of guide Harry into this new, brand new world. As he he just has a very very good heart. Um, now, and, and I'll get into this a little bit later. The thing about Hagrid's good heart is that sometimes it can get him into trouble, uh, and especially when it comes to to creature and magical creatures. Uh, creature. Not that good. <laughs> Sorry. but but okay. it, it you know he he sometimes sees the good in magical creatures that others don't or just flat out isn't there <laughs> and he gives them opportunities that he probably shouldn't but uh he and he doesn't always make the best choices all the time but he is extremely extremely loyal to to a lot of people but specifically to Harry, to Dumbledore, I think to the greater good. Um, he He's just that fantastic character. Um, but what do you guys think? What are some of your favorite attributes, characteristics, things about Hagrid? So from this point of the episode onward, we all have to speak in, in Hagrid. Just no. want to make sure y'all... No. <laughs> <laughs> just, I don't even know where to begin. I'd have to do some studying. <laughs> hmm. Some at. Some at. <laughs> not only no words, not, not whole phrases. Mm. Where to begin with? He's one, he's definitely in my top five favorite characters in mm-hmm. all of Harry Potter. And I think I've said that for too many more than five characters at this point, but Hagrid definitely mm-hmm. is in there. He's just such a. A sweet character he he's both the the sometimes the cause for wrong but he also is like he's also like the source of hot goss <laughs> even though he's not a gossiper in any way hot goss hot goss oh, hot david's goss. sorry hot i'm gossip. out of the lingo i know the wizarding world catch up <laughs> keep up so I like that he's like this source of gossip, but he also doesn't want to, he doesn't actively try to reveal information. I should have said that. I shouldn't have said that. (laughs) But then later, like, I guess in the, the fourth one in Goblet of Fire, he does like say, I want you to see something and shows him the dragons. Right. I don't know. Hagrid's just got such a big heart. Like you said, His heart's the thing that you love the most about him. Mm -hmm. He's so big. He could almost be intimidating. But he's just the cuddliest, like, kindest, most warm-hearted person that you'd come across. And that's exactly what Harry needed. Also protective. Yes. And loyal. Yes. So very much what Harry needed early on. And then continually throughout the series, just that steady. He's a rock for them. Mm -hmm. And I love that. I think he's the most loyal character. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I yeah, I agree with that as well. Like Snape has a lot of loyalty, but he's also like yes. he doesn't take it 
he doesn't take it with a smile i would say right. like he doesn't he it's almost kind of a begrudging to, loyalty yes but mm-hmm. it is a very, is the strongest loyalty but he's still mm-hmm. begrudging and so i would put him less than than hagrid and and maybe mcgonagall would have to be have to be up there with him as well because i think but but Hagrid and McGonagall both have the same loyalty to Dumbledore where they don't really question his decisions. They just do mm-hmm. what he says. And it is worth noting that he's part of both Order of the Phoenix. Yeah. He's one of the few members that survives the whole thing and is part of both orders. Yeah, that's true. I'm trying to think what my favorite moment of his is, though. There's so many. I think most of his stuff with Buckbeak. Mm-hmm. Like one of my favorite scenes in the movies is, and it's not really in the same in the book because the book has more time, but the mm-hmm. movie, he's just skipping rocks. He's just halfway in the water and he's like, Bug breaks for sense to death. And he's just <laughs> like, I love it. He's wearing this big weird coat. It's just mm-hmm. fantastic. And then obviously pretty much the whole Sorcerer's Stone. I mean, he's so he's in that one the most. Right. That's when yeah. he gets the most screen time. And everything else I kind of feel robbed by how I much time I get with him. At the end of Chamber of Secrets, whenever he comes back from Azkaban, and you just get that really sentimental moment with the three of them, like all just yeah, everybody's clapping. And then everybody claps and then you just want to cry this, a little so bit. Oh, well, Slytherin's being of course, stupid. For Slytherin's, but... <laughs> okay, so another thing that I love about Hagrid is the way that he speaks. Yeah. I think that's one of the most entertaining bits about it, where he he's really one of the few characters, other than the all of the French characters in Victor Crumb, that has like <laughs> he has an accent that's written out and she must mm-hmm. not be named. Must be careful. Did yes. really well in terms of writing that character and he always has mm-hmm. that voice and it's recognizable so but after the second first or second book so there'll be times where he says something and they don't say who says it because you know who it is mm-hmm. immediately yeah. and then they'll say like oh you know Hagrid came walking up <laughs> yeah his, his voice is definitely one of the it's I think it's always going to be one of the most iconic Voice accent, I guess, and not just like yeah. Robbie Coltrane's voice, but the book. The book, a voice. yeah. Jim Dale also does a really good job. Well, Jim Dale. Well, I think Stephen really Fry. It's Robbie Coltrane. Stephen Fry actually wins in terms of Hagrid voices. I've never Jim heard Dale. Stephen Fry. Stephen Fry's Stephen Fry's one kind of scared me, and that how eerily similar it is to Robbie hmm. Coltrane. I'll probably take very a listen good. to it after this. You'd have to look it up. Yeah, I want to hear. It's it. very good. Yeah, but I, I think one of my favorite things that I would that I saw when I was researching kind of Hagrid's character in preparation for this was just the idea of you know when Harry first got to Hogwarts and he was having like a I mean it was like one on the day that he he and Snape first kind of had their very first class together and it was brutal and if it was rough that Hagrid invited him over for tea still. And it just, again, just a very fatherly kind of moment to, Hey, I'm, I'm even though you're at school, I'm still going to watch out for you because I still care about you. And what was beautiful is that in the cursed child, when Albus gets to Hogwarts, Hagrid does the same thing to where he invites him over for tea. Uh, what a little so, turd. <laughs> doesn't he turn so him you, down doesn't he turn I him think, down i i don't i don't remember if he does or i not, think he turns but I it think sounds he like albus down. that he does sounds like albus and i don't mean albus as an albus dumbledore Who, whoever you are if you think that i'm being that i'm being disrespectful to dumbledore no it's Al, albus severus potter the two bravest men i've ever known and you're gonna be a little turd in the next book. You're gonna be a turd in the next book. <laughs> now, what that's are what he says? That's how the scene yes, ends. That, that's how the scene. Yeah, exactly. That's verbatim what it says. Um, but what is a moment or maybe a characteristic that you you may not love about Hagrid? Uh, it's kind of like the same thing we we're talking about with McGonagall, but I, I guess because like with they, McGonagall, it was hard to find to something. About. You had the most. No, no. I just it. went. Listen, I just went on one little rant about it. In the um, Sorcerer's Stone. 
the sorcerer's stone because he literally uh you know he literally brings a dragon knowing he's not supposed to be be bringing a dragon on on the grounds and he just not lets a smart harry man. hermione neville take all the flack when they're trying to help him out of the mess that he put himself in they lose 50 points each they get detention they become the laughing stock of not the laughing stock but they become like kind of the villains of the school in their own house like no one wants to talk to him and Hagrid just kind of gets off scot free and and so at the time i said you know what Hagrid that's that's like a, a jerk move you you can't you can't do that but however his job. however i don't care you take up responsibility you're an adult <laughs> you are an adult take your responsibility however he did make up for it obviously um, in the Chamber of Secrets, when Harry was found in a hard place over over Justin and with Sir he nearly mm -hmm. head headless Nick, and bust in the room, and he says, "It wasn't Harry. It wasn't Harry. Don't like." Uh, he's like, I "I'm willing to go in front of the Minister of Magic himself." And he had been. Uh, we didn't know this at the time, obviously, if you're reading for the first time. But like, he had been the one who was accused of opening up the Chamber of Secrets and all that kind of stuff. Um, and even when he was about to be, when he was taken to Azkaban, he was more concerned about Dumbledore being removed than him going to Azkaban because he cared about the students so much and about their well-being <laughs> and their safety. Um, and so that's like one little moment in, in the Sorcerer's Stone to where sometimes he makes decisions that he shouldn't but it's also Hagrid, so it's understandable at the same time. And there's just way too many more instances to where he pr he proves how great of a character he is, more so than that one moment in the Sorcerer's Stone. I don't know if I hate this, like it's something I dislike, but it's a character flaw of his, is that, and it, I don't even know if this is a flaw that I think about it, but he's a horrible liar. <laughs> Like yeah. my mind kind of went to order the Phoenix and how poorly he hid all of the secrets and why he was gone and everything. And then in the book, like he literally gets yes. chased down by minister ministry of magic agents and like McGonagall gets hit and he just makes a run for it <laughs> with Fang. I think just ridiculous. Mm. Yeah. I, but I don't I, know if I that's a flaw. It was good. It was a cool scene yeah. to watch, especially because the, they're watching it all happen from the astronomy tower, and it's just, it was wild. Yeah, I don't know if I have anything. I think I agree with Dave in that sometimes he makes decisions that you're just like, Why? Like, come on, dude. But, but, but at the same time, you need him to make those bad decisions because he's like, I shouldn't yeah. have said that, and now you learn the, the whole plot. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm more, I'm more, I'm more okay that he can't necessarily keep a secret or anything like that, and or also that he's a terrible liar. But come on, man, that was a that was 150. The dragon points. was bad. Norbert was. Yeah, bad. It, was, it was a bad situation. Norbert uh, was I bad. Get that. Bad time. People make mistakes, guys, and we can't cancel them for one mistake. I'm just kidding. I'm not gonna get on that soapbox. Everybody makes mistakes. Everybody, Everybody has, has mistakes. mistakes. Yes. No cuts. Everybody knows what, what we're, we're talking no about. Cuts. <laughs> No cuts. We're doing it live. I stand by it. <laughs> so anyway, so we Spencer, you kind of got into this a little bit, um, but I, I I wanted to ask the choose one scene. Your in your opinion, that is the best scene with Hagrid in it. And it's not the one I mentioned in this yet section. Before, so right, and even in this section, like we could we could throw out numerous ones if we want to as honorable mentions of what we think is a is a really incredible scene with Hagrid being in there. I got it. And but the book scene is slightly better, but the movie one is great. It's when Ron is puking up slugs after yes. them. It's the mud bloods and murmurs scene yes. where Hagrid encourages Hermione while she's crying. I don't remember exactly what he says, but he's like, don't let him get you for one minute. Mm -hmm. And they put that in the scene. They put that scene, like clip us of it, in the Harry Potter reunion special 
when Robbie mm-hmm. Coltrane was talking about how like he won't be around oh, forever, yeah. but Hagrid will. I was like, it's too soon. Like it happened. Yeah. That happened. Like his death happened so close to that. That that really broke me. Yeah. In hindsight, yeah. so that would be, I guess, my scene. <laughs> it's Abby. Hard. What about you? I think again the scene that gets me all emotional with Hagrid and it's the the one where he comes back from Azkaban and everyone's just so happy to see him in yeah. the three give him that big old hug you know <laughs> Yeah no I I'll I'll throw a couple of them out there that I, I really enjoyed I guess a combination of I think just little moments I guess not necessarily scenes but little moments from the books and the film so in the books one of my favorite ones is uh, and we've talked about this before, but I think it's Harry's first Quidditch match. And Hagrid comes to to watch the game. Uh, watch YouTube. <laughs> but and also like with Dean Thomas and whatever of them <laughs> of, of Dean's just like, oh, you can't do that in football. He's like, this is not football, but they should change the rules, you know, <laughs> like just him hopping in on it. And it's just one of my one of my like little quick scenes that I absolutely enjoy. Another one is in the Chamber of Secrets or no, in the Prisoner of Azkaban in the book when Hagrid has a tough moment with Ron and Harry and says, hey, you guys are acting like little jerks. Uh, I have. A girl right, he's been who's, coming by. Who, who's coming by herself crying um, because you're not talking to her and all this kinds of stuff. And she's been helping me on this case and you guys haven't. Uh, and I'm okay with that, but you need to cut her some slack kind of moment. And I was just like, man, that was a really good scene, Hagrid. Like looking out not just for Harry, but for all the students, regardless of, of who's enacting the injustice or whatever he adopts the trio very quickly oh yeah in the half-blood prince didn't he like cut them off briefly because they decided not to take his class that year and he got upset with them so he stopped talking to them <sighs> yeah yes. yeah but i you know i'd be butthurt that's about funny. that too yeah Hagrid, it's funny I, yeah being butthurt is a very that's that's in character it mm-hmm. is okay the honorable mention have a lot of friends. one <clears throat> The honorable mention I was going to bring up is the one that Abby and I were subtly mentioning earlier, which is mm-hmm. the death of Aragog. And I think I, <laughs> that's a really good scene. Not to mention the pinch. It is. Yeah, I reckon that too. <laughs> yeah. But also, the the best part of that scene is not Hagrid, but Slughorn. <laughs> Oh, for sure. Yes, will you know, and eventually, eventually, we'll do a character study on Slughorn, which will pro- <laughs> that that's probably going to be the entire episode. It's just us well, doing this that one. Scene. Well, and this one doesn't. Yeah, it's true. This one doesn't have a character like book versus movie. I, I mean, mm-hmm. we've done a little bit naturally, but right, Robbie Coltrane is Hagrid, but oh, yeah, the sure. Slughorn yeah, is going to be a ton of book versus movie. Mm-hmm. Whenever we do that, because they're yeah. not similar, but I love movie <laughs> Slughorn, and I will defend Jim Broadbent. I will defend him to to the death. Mm-hmm. So yeah. my body yeah. decays. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I would say another one that just tugs at my heartstrings is in the Deathly Hallows Part Two, right before Harry dies and Hagrid's there in the forest with him. And then Hagrid has to be the one to carry him back. He's the one who carried him as a baby. As a, as a little baby. And then carried um, him as an adult. And it, it's just At super birth, sad. Birth. And and again, R- Robbie Coltrane, he, he just does such a great job of showing the pure anguish and pain of, of having to, having to, to do that job. Um, and so huge, and the, and the huge, huge beginning moment. of Deathly Hallows Part One too. Yeah, I was gonna say that. that I was gonna mention that. I mean, yeah, I, I, you know, I was the one who carried you as a baby, and now, now I get to take you out of here, kind of, mm-hmm. kind of thing. Um, again, just a beautiful moment. So I don't know if I could actually choose one. I think That's I think hard. I'm just gonna stick with with naming a bunch of them because I'm going with the mud blood scene still. I think that's a good one. I think that's a really good one. Um, 
absolutely love it. Um, but yeah, yeah, absolutely agree. But where did where does Hagrid? <clears throat> where is he on your rankings of Hogwarts professors? Because technically, oh. you know, he is he is a professor. I forget. Are we leaving Dumbledore out of this? Because he's not a professor. I think we said. I think we said we're keeping Dumbledore out because he's okay. not a professor in right, most right. of the lore. Okay. Because Fantastic Beasts would be a whole different ranking of professors anyway. I think so too. So I feel like McGonagall and Lupin are still like tied for first or second. Mm -hmm. I, I I definitely have him still above Snape because Snape sucks. He's dead Horrible last on my I list. I think he'd be like top five. Hagrid? For me. Well, professor. That's the hard part. He's... He's not a good professor. He's not a great professor. He's not. He's a great not. A, he's not a fantastic <laughs> he's, he's professor. Above Snape. He had a good. Moment, well, okay. But he's okay. not a Hold good on. professor overall. Right. Well. Right. Well, hear me out. This is my only defense for for Hagrid in this. The one lesson that he was truly allowed to do that we've heard about. That was fantastic. His first lesson was with Buckbeak. Well, we haven't gotten this far in our reread, so Buckbeak's a good lesson. He did do other yeah. good lessons. So he did the unicorn. Later, yes. Prisoner of Azkaban? That might have been Goblet of Fire. And then yeah, it was Goblet of Fire. <clears throat> he actually introduced us to Bow Truckles before mm -hmm. we meet Pickett in right. Fantastic Beasts. So we actually learned about Bow Truckles first. That might have been earlier, actually. And then he did one other lesson that was good. Yeah. But I, I don't remember what it was. Right. So I think and, like, obviously it, it, he did one on Festrals. Yeah, he did that do one on Thestrals. And, and yes, I think he had some that were, were some stinkers and some boring ones as well. But that was also oh, amidst the, the investigation. And He's probably like that. probably middle of the road. Like he's higher as a character, character than he is as a professor. For sure. That's fair. For sure. That's fair. Snape is horrible to children, so he's not in my top five. Lupin and McGonagall <laughs> probably are at the Lupin top. Lupin and McGonagall are, are up there. I have said this previously. I think Flitwick should always be up there. I think yeah, so too. He's he's I agree. He's consistent, if yeah. nothing else. I remember last time I made a joke about how I kind of wanted to put Mad Eye Moody, but it's not really Mad Eye Moody. So that's true. But I like yeah. <laughs> so Barty yeah. Crouch Jr. I was kidding. He's like if uh, Mad he's Eye my Moody was six. able to teach, I feel like he would have been a great professor. He was a good professor. Yeah. So in his own I, way. Yeah. For Reds, I would probably like, yeah. So I would probably have like McGonagall, Lupin. Flitwick, mm -hmm. and then probably Lupin's Hagrid. my top. After, especially after reading it for Prisoner of Azkaban recently, so it's it's yeah. Lupin the McGonagall. I think Lupin well, makes class fun. He makes Flitwick. learning fun, and I think that's the most important thing for students. While McGonagall I, I, is like I, top skill, I just know I know McGonagall's right. teaching style personally from Hogwarts Mystery, so that's why she's number one for me. She she saw my potential in her class mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. allowed me to take extra extra classes. So that's why Sorry, it's being dramatic. <laughs> he, he just had to yeah, he just had to leave. But that's okay, why my movie my horror name. slughorn's in my top five, but book slughorn is not. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how to rectify that. I, you know, I it's been a while since slughorn, I've read Half Blood. Brain, I think actually so I'm not sure as a professor himself, other than this favoritism, I think Slughorn's a better professor than than most of them you know slughorn so does a lot he he's really good club. at potion making no it's he not a good thing. Hey, save it That's save it we'll thing. get there we'll get there i'm just saying in my ranking of professors he probably is up there yeah right right yeah so i would say Hagrid's probably for me is four i think he's five That's behind safe. slughorn but yeah. they're both bad they both have flaws right we're not going to put like Trelawney up there. No. Or Sinistra. Like people we don't know anything about. Right. David's frozen again. I think Kettleburn. If we knew more about Kettleburn. <laughs> yes. He's a better care of magical creatures professor. That's for sure. Yeah. Who's the, who's his grubbly plank? Hagrid's oh, yeah. sub. She's kind of better than he is. Well. Yeah. We don't get her very much. No. Right. Yeah. So. Well, yeah. any any departing last thoughts as we finish talking about Hagrid? 
I mean, we didn't mention anything about Maxime and the Giants. Uh, yeah, I, I, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They well, didn't get married or anything. Hagrid's so tale is Hagrid's tale is one of my favorite chapters of Order of the Phoenix, which is yeah. a mm-hmm. book that I don't enjoy very much. So, <laughs> if nothing else, it's a good. It's a. It's a good. It's a good pro point for I, him. I, yeah, I love the addition. I love the addition of of adding just more to his character, like you said, Spencer, yeah. of just being able to explore more of his background and and who he is. Um, I think that's also very important for, but I think to kind of depart, I don't, uh, Robbie Coltrane will always be Hagrid. Um, always. We miss him. How they're going to do Cursed Child now. There's so many people gone. I don't yeah. know that they can. I think I they will think try. They I hope they Regardless don't. of if I, they I, should. Oh, man. I, I really just, hope that they don't. It's just, it's a money thing, not a. Yeah. So, well, and yeah. as much as like we hate, hate to be a hate, like I, I want to be supportive for me. Mm-hmm. That's too. Me. Too. That too. Yeah. So. Yeah. I would. Hard. I would say. I would say no. Don't do it. Do yeah. not. If you if you do, I'm done. The Alan Rickman is a much bigger piece of it. They could just cut Hagrid out. They could. Yeah, they probably could. Alan Rickman. Or they could CGI. Hard to get Robbie Coltrane. That's is what I'm more... saying. If they. I'd be more okay with a quick recast of somebody doing a kind of mm-hmm. not a, cause it's not a lengthy part of it. It wouldn't be like someone taking over the role. It'd be like someone doing a, a tribute, a quick tribute to him. Right. Alan Rickman is a much bigger piece of that puzzle. Not to mention mm-hmm. Albus Dumbledore. Well, Michael Gaiman's still kicking. So, mm-hmm. and McGonagall's a huge part of it too. So I'm just like, we can't yeah. leave Matthew Smith anytime soon. Someone, yeah. Was it you that gave us the scare? Someone gave us a scare about her dying, and I was like, yeah. "That was not okay." No, I don't, it was Andrew. I don't remember who. It I think was. it was Andrew. Oh, I think you're right. I think didn't, it was Andrew. Didn't Dame Maggie Smith die today? What? No, 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 she did not. Happy birthday, Andrew. No, she did not. Also, how dare you? Dame Maggie <laughs> Smith you. was not allowed to die. Mm. Never. It's a good one. Happy birthday, Andrew. Happy birthday, Andrew. <laughs> but. That is going to do it here for the show of Requirement, a Harry Potter podcast, streaming everywhere you get podcasts and also on YouTube. Uh, what What is coming next for the podcast? Glad you should, happy you should ask, David. Uh, we are starting a series that we're doing just for this spring. And it is, going, I will say nothing other than that it is called the show of Requirement House Cup. Mm-hmm. And I won't tell you what we're doing. At, at, at all you're just gonna have to it's a little tidbit uh yeah. follow us subscribe on youtube or wherever you're listening to this podcast and i don't know if we're gonna post the back catalog on youtube we don't have a video component so right um, maybe we'll we'll we'll, we'll we'll dabble mm-hmm. later on so just kind we'll, of yeah, keep an eye out for those things but this is every most most tuesdays we say three tuesdays yeah. a month so that's kind of how we do this if you're new on the like YouTube front or on the listener front. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but again, thank you guys so much for joining us. Uh, like Spencer said, make sure to like, share, and subscribe on YouTube and to subscribe on any other podcast platforms that you have. Make sure to go to our Instagram and follow us there at hpotter underscore fanatics uh, to catch up with all of our, our posts and also to look out for any new episodes and just to see what we're, we're, up, what, we're, what we're up to and what we're doing. So uh, until next time, mischief managed. (laughs) That is where we're going to cut it.